structure fire, rescue one, engine five. Rescue one arrived first, identified a working structure fire. It was full of smoke, you couldn't see it like normal. We work in the dark. Conditions uh, began to change. Uh, we noticed that it was uh, increasingly getting hotter. While pulling ceiling, uh, we were met with heavy heat and uh, some rollover flame over our heads. We all felt our gear get saturated uh, much faster than usual, so we knew we, we had a problem that was getting hot quick and we couldn't find the seat of the fire. I decided that we were going to um, exit the second floor. Well, once we exited the structure, we realized that we had bigger problems is that I was missing somebody that was inside the house with me. And it was at that time that we received uh, an emergency uh, notification through our radio, uh, a man down feature on our radio. And the mic automatically opens up and we heard Rob's call for help. <laughs> Battalion Chief Fowl said, it's Rob, go get him. So, so Rob Bays is the senior firefighter on the division. He is one of those individuals that all of us look to, uh, to to gain experience, knowledge. When somebody is smarter than you and your mentor, how did they get themselves in trouble and how am I gonna get them out of trouble? And coming in, it was a steep stairwell and a real short landing at the top. And uh, so I wanted to make sure, this is, and I don't know why, but for some reason I wanted to be extra careful and feeling for the steps and then Next thing I know, I'm landed on my belly on the steps, and I slid down it like a sled. And when my head hit that landing at the back, my head kicked back, and it felt like lightning going down my back. But I couldn't move. I, I couldn't make my arm work to, to get to my mic to, to, to call for help. It was apparent that he was in a lot of distress. Rob's not that kind of guy to just call out for help. He's never like that. So for him to say that over the radio, I knew he was in some, some deep stuff. Without hesitation, they immediately went back on air. I think we all knew that time was not on our side. Clicked in my regulator about halfway through uh, the living room. And we find Rob face down at the landing of the stair. His eyes were just gazed off into the horizon. I couldn't. He wouldn't answer any of my questions or anything, so I knew that there was something seriously wrong. Myself and Captain Shinnefield grabbed Rob by his um, SCBA straps and began egressing the building with him. And as they're moving him out, right, they're stumbling and, and falling, and Captain Shinnefield's mask had become dislodged during that, uh, and so he was just he was just eating the smoke. Um, upon uh, exiting the building. Captain Shenfield and I began to vomit. Just we were depleted, spent. Immediately when something like a May Day happens, uh, we have medics right there at the door ready to help. So as soon as we got him out to the porch, medics completely took over. And I woke up out on the lawn and I told him, I said, I think I broke my neck. I, uh, I need to go to Miami Valley and I need the helicopter. I, mean, I had a surgeon named Nora Foster. She's the one that cut on my spine to keep me walking. Those guys there, they saved my life. And now I'm back here, ready to go back to work. And it's unbelievable, it's a, it's a miracle. I can't say thanks enough to everybody at that scene. My battalion chief on down. I love all them guys, they're amazing and the stuff they did, unbelievable. That's why I'm here today.